In fact, I would say musicians are supposed to be God's harmony department. But most of the time, they're in discord and uh, they're in disharmony and they become commercial minded. But actually, music is what's supposed to keep people uh, inspired and keep them seeing this uh, invisible beauty of the mind and spirit. That's what music is for because it didn't originate on this planet, it came from somewhere else. It's a gift to this planet, like uh, poetry and uh, sculpture, painting, all those things are uh, gifts because uh, not all men can be musicians or artists, no, so therefore it's outside the ordinary, it's a gift. And if people take this gift, you see, appreciate it, and uh, a person can look at a beautiful painting and get inspired that someone uh, had the energy and the sincerity to produce a beautiful painting. And that's the way it is with music. You got so much music until uh, you have to be able to use your intuition and listen to the music that can do things for you, past, present, and future, all the way to the end of truth into the world of myth. And then you got it made because you, you stepped into the realm of impossibilities. And what this planet needs at this point is for something impossible to have to show a better way. You talked about Egypt a little bit earlier. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about Egypt and if you found the ankh to life over there. Oh, yeah, Egypt was uh, quite, quite a difficult, you know, sometimes um, combating, uh, well, mostly some musicians were saying the music is too far for people. So one day I really got tired of that. So I said, well, they said Christ went to Egypt to survive. I'm going to. So I went over to Egypt, and, uh, I, and then I was in um, was I, I was in one of the current Scandinavian countries. Well, I think it was in Copenhagen. That's the city I was in, in Denmark. And they had this uh, round trip fare for one hundred and sixteen dollars to Egypt, with a hotel for two weeks free. You know I couldn't resist that. And we had about an hour to make the plane. We had all our equipment and everything. We I, I took the equipment and I I sent it by truck to uh, over to one of the, the storage houses in in, uh, in Holland, and uh, we caught that plane, and we went on to Egypt. And then I found out the travel agency put me in the Mina House, which is uh, about a half a block from the pyramid, so I could sit right on the balcony and look at the, uh, the pyramid. Then I I was facing the Pyramid Road, and I could go right around and walk on the road, keep right straight on down, about two blocks of the Sphinx. I had a wonderful time. But while I was there, I went in the Pyramid up in the King's Chamber, and I said, now this Pyramid was made of uh, the name Ra, and it hadn't been said in here in thousands of years, so let's say it nine times and see what will happen. So we said Ra nine times, and all the lights went out in the Pyramid. So I had to... Psych experienced that. <laughs> the lights went out. and uh, That's a true we, story? Yeah, we had to stand still. Because, you see, in order to get up to the King's Chain, we had to go up a ramp. And you really, it's about 12 stories down if you, you made a mistake. So we were afraid to move, you know. But it happened we had a guide with us, so he lit up under a little count that looked like a match in the doctors of the pyramid. And we, we came on down the ramp backwards. Uh, then we, he wanted me to go into the Queen's Chamber, but you have to practically almost get on your knees to go in there because you have to go through this little, uh, this tunnel. And I said, well, some other time. But he grabbed my hand, he said, no, now. So he had to count. So I went in the Queen's Chamber, then the lights came on. 